Hey, good morning. Welcome to worship. This is the festival day in the church called the Holy Trinity. When we consider how it is that we know God, one God in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God, the creator of the world, Jesus, the savior of all people, the Holy Spirit, the presence of God guiding us every day. Just a reminder that we are recording this and we will be posting it on our YouTube channel later. There are several uh, new and existing groups that are gonna be meeting using Zoom in the next uh, couple of weeks. There's a new Bible study group that's gonna be meeting on Wednesday evenings and that starts not this week, but next week. There's a new social time on Thursday evenings, and that starts this week. Coffee House Book Group is going to start meeting again uh, Mondays at noon, starting tomorrow. And there's a multi-church men's prayer breakfast that meets Wednesday mornings. If you want more information on any of these groups or the links to be part of them, take a look at your June newsletter or the weekly email from the church office. And if you didn't receive either of those, then contact the church office and let us know, and we'll get that to you. And then a couple of our regular reminders about using Zoom for worship. We ask that you please keep your mic muted unless you're the active speaker or leader. If you take a look, probably on the lower left of your screen, there should be a little picture of a microphone. If there's a bar across it, it means that you're muted. If you're calling in by phone, star six will mute and unmute you, or just check your phone for a mute button on your phone. If you have prayer requests for today, you can add them in the chat box. If you click on chat on your screen and then type your prayer request, you can also, email me or call me with prayer requests, but you have to do that before Sunday morning. So I'm not taking phone calls during worship. You can set up your screen a couple of different ways. Um, gallery view means you see as many people as can fit on your screen. And speaker view means you see the person who is speaking or leading at the moment or the slides that are being shared or video, if there's video. If you're on a tablet or smartphone, if you swipe to the side, that should switch you between them. If you're on a computer, you need to click on the little white squares, probably on the top right corner of your screen. We will again continue to have a time for conversation following our worship service for anyone who would like to stay for that. So this time I invite you to light your candle if you're choosing to have one, take a deep breath, prepare your hearts and minds to worship God. Let me continue with the call to worship. Good morning. Please join me in the call to Thank God it. together to redeem it responsibly. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name throughout the earth. You made your glory higher than heaven. When I look up at your skies, at what your fingers made, the moon and the stars that you set firmly in place, what are human beings that you think about them? What are human beings that you think about them? You've made them only slightly less than divine. Look at what you're doing here. Crowning them with glory and grandeur. You've let them rule over your handiwork, putting everything under their feet. All sheep and all cattle, the wild animals too. The birds in the sky, the fish of the ocean. Everything that travels the pathways of the sea. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name throughout the earth. 
Okay, we are again uh, using some video from our own band to help lead us in singing. Um, if I do this right, you should also get the lyrics. Let us pray together. God of heaven and earth, before the foundation of the universe and the beginning of time, you are the triune God, author of creation, eternal word of salvation, life-giving spirit of wisdom. Guide us to all truth by your spirit, that we may proclaim all that Christ has revealed and rejoice in the glory he shares with us. Glory and praise to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. So we um, are occasionally, we're inviting folks to share their favorite Bible verse and why it's their favorite. And so Lori's going to be sharing that with us this morning. So Lori, whenever you're ready. Good morning. I'd like to share one of my favorite Bible verses with you today. During these troubling and anxious times, this verse gives a message of hope and comfort. The verse is Romans 8, verse 28. It's a verse that I remember my dad saying in times he was worried or overwhelmed. He would remind me when he knew I felt the same. He even had a plaque with the verse hanging in our home. Before I read the verse, there are a few verses preceding it that I would like to read, followed with a writing from my daily devotional booklet that it it all ties together. So I will start with Romans 8 and verse 14 through 17. And it says, For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, when we cry Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. I will skip to verse 22 now through 28. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, 
the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God who searches the heart knows what is the, what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And verse 28, we know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. And from my devotional booklet, this ties it all in. You cannot see the sun before it comes up on the horizon at sunrise. You can hope for it. You can expect it. You can wait for it. Eventually, you see a glow in the sky that indicates the sun is rising. Hope can be more elusive. We believe that God's goodness may be ready to break forth in the sky. We know that God's glorious grace can surprise us in times that seems most hopeless. We may not see the dim glow in the sky, but hope is on the way. Where do you find it hard to hold on to hope? Maybe it's a challenge to keep a daily faith practice routine. Maybe you are facing a medical diagnosis or your best friend lost a job. Where is hope for you? Paul says we wait for hope with patience. More appropriately, we try to wait for it with patience. We hold on to hope, knowing that God is with us, that, God, that good things can come even in bad situations. May you be blessed with the peace of God and the hope that comes with it. Amen. Thank you, Lori. This morning, uh, our ELCA presiding bishop, Elizabeth Eaton, is reading our, uh, yeah, sorry, reading the gospel for today. And she is also preaching. She has recorded this for all of the ELCA churches to be able to use for today. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, a lot has changed since last Trinity Sunday. Not just the COVID-19 pandemic under which we live, but also the killing of George Floyd, an unarmed, handcuffed black man by a white police officer in Minneapolis. Just a few weeks ago, we learned, many of us, of the, the shooting of Ahmaud Aubrey. But since that time, Breonna Taylor, Dejan Sean Reed, Tony McDade have also been killed. And how many others whose names are known only to their families and to God? Today is Trinity Sunday. It's a hard, it's a hard holiday for us to wrap our minds around. It's a difficult, a difficult concept. But we learn about the Trinity, particularly in today's first lesson from Genesis. In this beautiful song of creation, we hear in the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep. 
and a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And God said, and creation began. Martin Luther put it this way. So also the Christian church agrees that in this description, there is indicated the mystery of the Holy Trinity. Father created through the Son, whom Moses called Word, and over this creative work brooded the Holy Spirit. Later, God says, let us make humankind in our image. This is the glorious relationship with God that spills out into all creation. God is not a lone ranger, and all of God shows up. All of God shows up, delighting in creation, caring for creation, weeping for creation, redeeming creation. I confess that I do not fully understand or even have language to describe the mystery of the Trinity. Probably won't until I finish my baptismal vocation and stand in the presence of God. I can't explain how, but I can testify to the great Lutheran question, what does this mean? God is relationship, within God and flowing from God. Creation is, not, is God's decision not to look after God's self, but focuses God's energies on creation. This Trinity, this God, this relationship is outward and overflowing. God is the one who does not grasp. As we hear in Philippians, let this same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as a thing to be grasped. Likewise, the Spirit is poured out on us all. Again, what does this mean? God is relationship within God, with the creation, with humankind, and among humankind. And since we are baptized into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, baptized into the Trinity, we are also part of this powerful, dynamic, living, giving, loving relationship with God, in God, with creation, with each other. We are inextricably woven together. No one is alone. No one is beyond the fierce, tender love of God, and God is not far off. God is present in creation, in each of us and in all of us. God is flesh and blood made visible in Jesus of Nazareth and in every human being. God is spirit, closer than our own breath. And this is how God as Trinity shows up today. God is creator. God created diversity beautiful, vital, alive. We must reject calls for colorblindness. That diminishes and washes out God's gift of diversity. We in the white majority can begin to see our siblings of color more clearly. We should be color amazed, recognizing the strength that comes with all our many colors. And God is creator made all of us in God's image. Let us make them in our image. That means all of us are a part of this relational triune God who did create all of humankind, each and every one and all of us together in God's image, all. And God is the word made flesh, our flesh, your flesh, my flesh, George Floyd's flesh. Jesus in his passion still suffers with those who suffer. The crucifixion of an unarmed handcuffed man lying face down on the street is the crucifixion and the passion of our Lord. The crucifixion of so many, too many black and brown people who live constantly with the violence of racism is the passion of our Lord. And God is spirit. The wind, the breath that moved over the face of the deep at creation, the breath of God that was breathed into the first earth creature, Adam. 
the breath of Jesus as he gave them the gift of the spirit. The breath crushed out of George Floyd. The breath of life God had given to him. And now church, we as the baptized, those of us baptized into the Trinity, show up. We work for an end to violence. The violence of racism that kills bodies and maims souls. And we work for the end of violence brought about by lawlessness and also frustration, masquerading in some cases as protest. In the fierce love of the Trinity, we do not deny anger. In the face of the reality and equity, inequity of racial injustice, anger is appropriate, is appropriate. But we use our anger to bring about change. We put out fires set to stores, workplaces, churches, and property. But we ask that the, spy, the Spirit kindle in us the fire of justice. We work for calm and quiet throughout our country, but we remain disquieted as we search deep within ourselves. We work for peace, but not the passive peace that allows the mechanisms of racism and white supremacy to stay in place. No, the peace God alone can give that gives us the strength and courage to act. The Trinity is a relationship within God, with creation, with us, and among us. Until the white majority feels in our soul that the pain and suffering of black and brown people is our own pain and suffering, it will not be safe to be black or brown in America. And until we feel in our own soul that this is our pain and our story, we are not open to the relationship that God wants to shower, share, lavish upon us as a relational God, a loving God, as a God of the Trinity, as a God who has brought us into that relationship and commands us to share that relationship and live that relationship with creation and with each other. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians ends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. It's actually a promise and I think marching orders for us. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is with us. The love of God is with us. The communion of the Holy Spirit is with us. And together in the communion and community of the Holy Trinity, we can make that a reality. Amen. I invite you to join me again in a, a piece um, written by and recommended by our uh, parent church by the ELCA for use this weekend for us to be confessing racism. It's called a lament for the church. If you choose, you may unmute your mic to, um, to uh, participate in this, or you can participate still muted. I invite you to Respond by using the words in the bold print. As church, we confess the sin of racism and condemn racist rhetoric and the ideology of white supremacy. God have God have mercy. Mercy. As church, we confess, repent, and repudiate the times when this church has been silent in the face of racial injustice. 
Uh, 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 Racism is deeply ingrained within the ELCA, a predominantly white church. It is deeply embedded within the individual congregations whose members continue to foster stereotypes and support policies that actively hurt people of color. God God have mercy. Have mercy. As church, we declare that the enslavement of black bodies and the removal of indigenous peoples established racism in the United States a truth this nation and this church have yet to fully embrace. God have Rooted in slavery, racism is manifested through the history of Jim Crow policies, racial segregation, the terror of lynching, extrajudicial killings by law enforcement, and the disproportionate incarceration of people of color. God have mercy. Save us, O oh God, from ourselves, from racism, from the manifestations of white supremacy, hidden in all calls for civility. From microaggressions, from apologies, apologies. Don't, don't, give don't give way to action, from, from forgiveness, from reconciliation, confessions are empty promises without meaningful actions, actions that are grounded in prayer education, and soul-searching repentance. The sin of racism separates us from one another. Though we trust that we are reconciled to God through Christ's death and, recon and resurrection, we seek such life-giving reconciliation with one another. As we repent, let us not turn back to ideologies that promote white supremacy. We trust that God can make all things new. Grateful for the long arc that bends toward justice, we pray. Grant us justice. Give us courage for the faith of these days. By the power of the Spirit. All for the sake of the kingdom. We share Amen. Amen. Kingdom. Kingdom. There's an, another piece by our own Have Mercy Band. I believe this one does not have lyrics to follow, but is more meant for us to listen and reflect. <laughs>
please join me as we pray for all of God's people. I will end each petition with Lord in your mercy. Please respond with, hear our prayer. God of everlasting love, provider of all things, your Son, Jesus Christ, has promised that you will hear us when we ask in faith. Hear us, Heavenly Father, as we pray for all people. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, help us to be your faithful disciples. We remember to you all those affected by hate, prejudice, racism, and fear. Help us to share your love and peace, knowing with certainty that you are with us always. Guide us in welcoming and loving all people, regardless of race, and help us to work together for justice and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord, please help us stand together. Jesus' sacrifice for all of us means that we must stand up for one another and recognize that fear, hurt, and outrage is rightly provoked by the senseless history of racism. Help us change and pass your love to one another. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Comfort and heal, merciful Father, all who are in need of any kind. Those who are ill or recovering from COVID-19, those missing the normal of daily routine, those who've experienced delayed and canceled plans and celebrations, loss of income, and all those isolated from contact with others, those injured or recovering from surgery, those facing unemployment, mental illness, depression, loneliness, those who are grieving loss of any type and those who care for them, many now in unsafe working environments. Give them a firm trust that they are not alone and the knowledge that you are with them always. We specifically lift up to you Peter in his recovery, John in his recovery, Barb's mother, Marion, Cindy during chemo treatment, Ron, Jim, Kale in his stem cell transplant, Susan in the loss of her brother, John, David and his family in the loss of his wife, Carol, Steve in the loss of his stepfather, David in the loss of his sister, Catherine, and Peg in the loss of her mother, Charlotte. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, watch over those who can't be with us today, those whose work, studies, or other circumstances keep them in faraway places. Lord, we especially raise up to you those in our armed forces. Keep them safe from any harm until they're safely home again. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for you to pour out blessings upon our Grace Families of the Week. This week we raise up to you Dave and Connie Posey, Michael Richmond and Matthew, Lori Botcher and Sierra, Ron and Julie Stiggy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for continued blessings for our companion churches. Alkenstein Lutheran Church in the Republic of South Africa, Desert Streams Church in Surprise, Arizona, as well as all of our friends in Guatemala. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Gracious God, hear the prayers of our hearts we now mention silently to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And together we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in Father, heaven, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your, hallowed be your name. name. Your kingdom come, come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the trial. From the trial. For us from evil. For the kingdom, power, power are yours. Amen. May the blessing of God be upon you, the blessing of the giver of life, the blessing of the Christ of love. 
the blessing of the spirit of peace. And may the blessing of the Holy Trinity be upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen.